Testing, testing. Linda, can you hear me? Well, you, we wouldn't know because there's no headphones. Yet. Okay. Testing, testing, testing. Leader Swanson. Testing, testing. Testing, can you read me? I think we're getting some kind of leader reading. Testing, testing. This is the State of Higher Education address. Testing the microphone for Linda. Testing, testing, testing. Came two, one, two. Um, testing, testing, testing. Thumbs up if you can hear me. You can't hear me because you don't have the right kind of headset on, I think. Making all the sounds, the sound of 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 the sound Testing, 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 guys. Seriously, there's really nowhere for her to wear this thing. Testing, 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 testing. Testing, 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 testing. If I could stash it, I would stash it here. Harder for you to see.
good. How are you? <laughs> Sorry, they're testing this microphone. I have to keep hitting it. Yeah, this, this is a good to go here. Yeah, I think so.
good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Commission for Higher Education's 2016 State of Higher Education Address. My name is Dennis Bland, and I have the honor of serving as chairman of the Indiana Commission for Higher Education. One of the privileges in serving on the Commission for Higher Education is actually having the honor of serving with 12 other Hoosiers who are just some of the most outstanding people that you would ever want to meet, and I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. So if we could give a round of applause for all the commission members. <laughs> In fact, I'm gonna ask if they could stand, if members of the commission you are here, if you could stand, they represent districts across the state. So thank you all for your service. As chair, one of the honors, one of the greatest honors I have is really having the opportunity to serve with Teresa Lubbers, uh, our commissioner who leads higher education efforts in the state of Indiana. And I have the opportunity to introduce her in a few moments, but, but a few acknowledgements before I do that. I would like to first appreciate and, and give thanks to the Indiana House of Representatives for allowing us to use this facility. Uh, now, I know it's, it's actually the taxpayer's facility, but we, we appreciate uh, the use of the space, and, and on behalf of the commission, we thank you. We would also like to express appreciation on behalf of the commission for uh, Ball State University. Uh, Ball State is actually serving as the official host, the higher education host for today's event, and they will also be providing refreshments at a reception that will take place at the end of the commissioner's address. So it is my pleasure to introduce our commissioner for higher education. Uh, the commission has been working extremely hard. There's an outstanding staff, but as I said earlier, you also have some individuals who are crisscrossing the state once a month, eight, nine times, 10 times a year really trying to do their level best to make sure that Indiana has one of the greatest high, higher education systems in the country. And I really can't think of anyone better who is fit for this time to lead our higher education efforts. We have, we have just approved and adopted a new strategic plan for the Commission for Higher Education. And really I could think of no one better in leading that effort than, than Teresa Lovers. Uh, Teresa came to the Commission for Higher Education in, in 2009, and she's been leading the team ever since. Prior to that, she actually served for 17 years as a senator in the Indiana Senate. So she has a wealth of experience. She, she has been tremendously involved in the, in the higher education process, but I also love her hands-on approach where she goes from city to city, state to state, really advocating on behalf of students. And, and if you're a student, she's one of the greatest advocates that I have seen trying to make sure that the state really has a student-centric and student-focused higher education system. And one of the things I love most about Teresa, and I've never shared this with her, I always love to be quiet when she's around because she has a laugh that lets everyone know that she is not being shortchanged in life. She has one of the best laughs I, I, I ever hear. You can tell that she enjoys a good laugh. It is my pleasure to introduce a lady who is so intelligent so witty and yet has a great sense of humor, but I think most importantly, her passion and her intelligence comes through when you're talking about advocating on behalf of the state of Indiana. So would you join me in welcoming Indiana's Commissioner for Higher Education, Ms. Teresa Lubbers. I don't think the chairman was expecting to have to stand on this little stool back here, but I needed it. Um, 
Thank you, Dennis, um, for your introduction, your kind words, but much more importantly for your service to the Commission for Higher Education, uh, both as a valued member and as our chair as well. Over the course of my many decades in public service, I can't think of anyone who brings a greater sense of passion and purpose to education leadership than our chairman, Dennis Bland. Um, those of you who know him know that Dennis has a quiet voice, but he's powerful. His understanding of complex issues is deep, and it's proven. His personal style is civil, gracious, and inclusive. Dennis's uh, depth of character is rooted in his own personal story of accomplishment. His parents were born in Mississippi, and both were precluded the opportunities that were provided to Dennis and his siblings to be able to get an education. He was one of eight children, and after his mother died when he was only five years old, his father raised the family on his own. It's safe to say that the term first-generation college student means a lot to Dennis because his generation was the first in his family given the option to pursue high school or college. He is the best example of servant leadership I have ever witnessed generously sharing his time and experience to, to improve educational opportunities for all students, from early childhood education through college. He brings a deep commitment to closing the achievement gap, to his role as the president of the Center for Leadership Development. CLD's mission is to advance minority youth in central Indiana by providing experiences that encourage personal development and educational attainment. We are fortunate today to have several members from CLD staff and members of Dennis's family here with us today, including Willie Bland, his father. Will you please all stand and be recognized? Before we begin this year's State of Higher Education Address, I would like to recognize Dennis for his unmatched service to the Commission, to the state, and to the students we serve. It's my privilege on behalf of Governor Mike Pence to present our Commission Chair, Dennis Bland, with Indiana's prestigious Sagamore of the Wabash Award for his trailblazing service to the state of Indiana. Teresa, thank you so very much. I, I, am, I am humbled from the, from the depths of my soul. It, it is a privilege to serve. Uh, I, will, I will accept this on behalf of my father. Uh, if I can just share, if, if there is a proverb that represents his life, if you kind of take his story and summed it up into five points, which I think he would want his children to have learned from his life, it would be these five points, and I'm finished. His life has told me that it is terribly important, number one, to have an unwavering faith in God, and number two, to always love and look out for your family, come what may. Number three, to always look out for your neighbor, and if you're not serving, your life isn't worth much. Number four, that you work so hard that work becomes toil that you struggle at the highest levels of excellence to achieve a goal. And then number five, that you just have an unwavering commitment to education. So Papa, thank you very much. Thank you, Dennis. On behalf of the Commission for Higher Education, I welcome each of you here today who's engaged in this important work with us. Education leaders, policymakers, community advocates, employers, and of course, students. Reflecting on the past three higher education addresses, I'm encouraged by the work that is underway 
and the progress that has been made. I said this in 2014, and it remains true today. The state of higher education in Indiana is strong and getting stronger, transformed but in need of more innovation, and valued but in need of better ways to increase and show that value. It is this third charge, the need to increase and show value, that spurred the commission to adopt its third strategic plan, reaching higher, delivering value. Maintaining our need to build a more student-centered, mission-driven, workforce-aligned system of higher education, the new plan remains focused on our big goal, that 60% of Hoosiers would hold quality degrees and credentials beyond high school by 2025. We've developed this plan with input from higher education leaders, business leaders, and policymakers understanding that each, gro each group will play a critical role in reaching that 60% goal. The era of the last strategic plan, reaching higher, achieving more, was one of significant progress in Indiana. Perhaps most lauded among the accomplishments would be our focus on aligning state funding to our goals for higher education. Indiana's pay for performance policies have been recognized as among the best in the nation. Our higher education funding formula drives dollars to universities that increase student completion, graduate more students on time, produce high demand degrees, and close the achievement gap. For students, Indiana is a very generous need-based financial aid state. We actually rank first in the Midwest and seventh in the nation. By, in 2013, we strengthened our financial aid policies to encourage more students to stay on track for timely completion. The results were immediate. In just two years, we've seen double-digit improvements in the percentage of students taking and completing the minimum courses needed to graduate on time. With the General Assembly's help and through the hard work of our colleges, we've simplified transfer redesigned the way remedial coursework is delivered, and reined in college costs. During the next four years, we will build upon these improvements to move Indiana's higher education system to the next level with a commitment to delivering value. To make good on that commitment, our new plan has three value-aligned overarching goals. One, completion. We must continue our work to ensure more Hoosiers complete a degree or credential. Two, competency. We must ensure that in return for their significant investment, students can demonstrate and apply the education they earn. And three, career. Ultimately, earning a degree must provide Hoosiers a clear path to fulfilling career options that will build on our state's economy. Reaching higher, delivering value, lays out a bold agenda that shifts our attention from the simplistic question, is college worth it, to a more appropriate question, how can we create greater value in education? The benefits of higher education are clearly known. Higher incomes, greater job security, better health, and stronger civic engagement. Even with these overwhelming benefits, the value proposition higher education offers to students and the state is complicated by legitimate concerns. Disparities in college graduation rates between social and racial groups. Unacceptable levels of student debt. And of course, nagging concerns about whether Indiana graduates are equipped to meet the workforce demands of the 21st century. Overcoming these challenges depends on not only a strong partnership between colleges and the state, but also on establishing deeper connections and more meaningful collaboration at both ends of the education continuum. The K-12 schools that prepare college students for college and the employers who hire and inspire graduates to live, work, and contribute to a stronger Indiana economy. It will take all of us together to meet that 60% goal. In the past two years, we've improved the number of Hoosiers with an associate degree or higher by nearly two percentage points, bringing us to about 36% overall. This is a significant improvement in a statistic that hasn't seen measurable change in decades. 
Just this week, Lumina Foundation published the latest A Stronger Nation report, which for the first time includes an estimated number of certificate earners. This new data will add about five percentage points, bringing Indiana to 41% in overall education attainment. Good progress, but still too far behind. We must stay sharply focused on completion if that gap is to be closed. We will continue at the Commission to measure success by not only the number of Hoosiers who complete degrees, but also by our ability to close the attainment and achievement gaps. For 25 years, the 21st Century Scholars Program has demonstrated the state's commitment to opportunities for students from low-income, minority, and first-generation families. The program has helped nearly 70,000 Hoosiers pursue higher education. 21st century scholars now enroll in college at higher rates than any income level, but still too few are graduating. In recent years, Indiana has taken steps to make sure that scholars are more successful by coupling financial aid with clear expectations and interventions designed to help these students be prepared for the rigors of college. To receive their scholarships, today's 21st century scholars are required to meet higher expectations and complete specific activities while they're in high school, such as meeting a 2.5 grade point average and participating in at least one work-based activity. Together with our legislative partners, the Commission will work to ensure requirements and expectations for scholars at the college level, too by providing more structured support to help them complete their degrees, simplifying the choices, streamlining processes, and targeting support to students when they need it. These are strategies that benefit all college students, not just 21st century scholars. And it's clear that we need to do a better job making sure that our students are ready for the academic rigor of college. The Commission's College Readiness Reports make clear the need to improve preparation at the K-12 level. While high school graduation and college going rates are at an all-time high, too few college graduates are prepared for college level work. And this is particularly true in mathematics. We know that students need to take and complete four years of math to be ready for college level work. Unfortunately, this is often not conveyed to parents or to students that it's a priority for college readiness. More than a quarter of our core 40 diploma recipients from high school require remedial coursework when they enter college. For those who receive the general diploma in high school, nearly two-thirds require remediation in college. And most students who need remediation need it in math. These students are far less likely to complete a degree or workforce credential, and they have fewer prospects for successful employment or successful lives. Challenges of college readiness extend beyond academic preparation. Many students lack college planning support. They try to navigate and they struggle to navigate the systems of testing, financial aid, and admissions processes. They often make ill-advised decisions about where and what to study and how to pay for it. Indiana has made great strides in providing financial support and planning guidance to low-income Hoosiers through the 21st Century Scholars Program. In the years ahead, we must work to better support our state's middle-income families, too, who receive little, if any, assistance to pay for college. Many of these families rely on student loans, and today, the average, the average Indiana student racks up about $30,000 in debt. The Commission will champion College 529 plans and policies to encourage early and ongoing saving, including clear benchmarks and information to help families plan and pay for the cost of college beyond tuition. Making sure that more students are academically and financially prepared for life after college will go a long way to making sure we increase our completion rates. 
Just as important, however, is making sure those credentials clearly resent, represent the skills and knowledge that Hoosiers need to be successful. A traditional college degree signals to society that one has the aptitude and the perseverance to complete a required number of courses. Gaining knowledge has always been the stated goal of higher education, but we need better ways for students to show what they know. Both in the process of earning their degrees and then afterward to potential employers. Likewise, more students should progress through their degrees based on what they've mastered, not just the number of hours that they spend in a lecture hall. It's on this point that reaching higher delivering value introduces a new focus, competency. A competency-based approach to higher education makes clear the expectations and the outcomes of a credential, and more closely aligns what employers expect with what graduates can actually do. There's no single model for competency. These programs incorporate a variety of practices to, to, meet, to meet diverse student needs. For adult students, self-paced programs that utilize online instruction let students progress based on what they learn and provide cost savings opportunities and important flexibility. Competency-based programs may also give Hoosiers the opportunity to earn credit for what they already know. For example, some programs will allow veterans to earn credit for their military experience through prior learning assessments that demonstrate their skills and knowledge. Even for traditional college students who come straight from high school, a focus on competency boosts college value by giving students clearly defined and demonstrated skills that they can take with them into the working world. Truly supporting more innovative practices like these will require Indiana to rethink aspects of our state's higher education system. In the years ahead, the Commission will work to ensure that our performance funding, our financial aid, and other policies are not barriers to competency options. This new focus on competency has the potential to enhance higher education value by conveying student learning, providing accelerated options for students, and giving employers some quality assurance that graduates are coming to them prepared to do the work. To an ever greater extent, employers are becoming key stakeholders in our work to improve higher education, quality, completion, and value. And this gets right at the heart of an ongoing conflict about higher education. Whether the goal is to teach students to think or to prepare them to get a job. The real answer, of course, is it cannot be an either or proposition. Higher education must do both, and employers understand that implicitly. They need academically prepared and technically skilled employees. But often, what is more difficult to find would be employees who think critically, communicate well, and adapt to change. A focus on competency helps address this critical balance, as does our recent state's focus on increasing work-based experience for more students. For too long, there's been a tendency to think about college and career as if they were sequential. First you go to college, then you get a job. But the reality is that it's, that's very confusing to people. And what we've discovered is, and it's not a surprise, that about half of all college students in this country say they would choose a different major or school if they could do it over again. We know the value of a degree is greatly increased when career planning and exploration are integrated throughout the students' educational journeys. That's why Indiana requires 21st century scholars to actually participate in career exploration while they're in high school. It's also why Indiana created the state's work study program, Earn Indiana. It, 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 it's basically been expanded to allow students to have internship opportunities for low-income college students and gain experience at the same time. And these efforts are having an impact. 
For example, the number of students participating in Earn Indiana internships has increased by 25%, and the number of employers hosting internships has increased by 350% in two years. When it comes to providing these kinds of career experiences, businesses and communities are ideally situated to take the lead and forge partnerships that not only prepare students for success, but build a future workforce to support local economies. Take the example of DECO, a manufacturing company based in Northeast Indiana. DECO forged a unique partnership with East Noble High School and other DeKalb County high schools to offer internships for sophomores, juniors, and seniors, exposing students to the full range of options in the manufacturing sector. DECO views its partnership with area schools as an investment in the company's future. Teresa Peterson, DECO's Director of Human Resources, said it perfectly. We can't afford to wait around for great employees to come to us. We invest time and resources into building our own pool of employees. We've found that investing in young people pays dividends long term, both in terms of employee expertise and loyalty. Indeed, many of DECO's current senior level employees began their own careers as interns, including Teresa. In 2014, DECO received Indiana's Internet's Employer of the Year Award. And we're so glad that they could join us again today to be recognized. The DECO folks are here with us. Thank you. <laughs> Indiana needs more businesses to follow DECO's example and provide internships for students in high school and in college. We know that internships are the number one college experience that leads to a job and one of the best and most effective ways to reduce Indiana's brain drain. Yet too few college programs include an internship as part of earning a degree. This doesn't mean that colleges should convert their campuses to technical schools, but it does mean colleges should be expected to find ways to enrich academic programs with real life relevant experience. This too is an issue of enhancing value for students because it helps them make the connection between what they're learning in college and the world they will enter post-graduation. Together, these three sections of Indiana's new strategic plan, completion, competency, career, chart the course for the Commission's work between now and 2020. As we consider the higher education landscape in 2016, it's clear that Indiana's college campuses and student populations are quickly changing. Building a stronger higher education system that delivers greater value requires unprecedented collaboration and agility across the existing system. From community colleges and regional campuses to comprehensive institutions and research universities. It also requires meeting, meeting the needs of a very different student population. While the traditional on-campus college experience remains the best option for many students, an increasing number of Hoosiers are attending school while they balance careers, jobs, and families. For example, we know that nearly 750,000 Hoosiers started college at one time but did not finish. To meet our big 60% goal, we must convince many of them to return and complete. And that's the goal of You Can Go Back, our, camp, our current campaign. It was supported by the General Assembly in 2015. You Can Go Back is reaching out directly to adults, sharing information about programs and incentives that will help them pay for college and navigate their path to degree completion. The results so far have been swift and impressive. In less than two months, almost 9,000 adults have responded to the campaign, and about 4,000 have requested more information about college programs that will meet their needs and lifestyle. One of those adults was Cheryl Mabry from Ellettsville, Indiana. Cheryl received an email about the You Can Go Back program. With a desire to change careers and become a nurse, she took the survey to explore her options. 
She learned about a scholarship offered by WGU Indiana designed for You Can Go Back students. And WGU Indiana also offered her a tuition discount because she is a state employee. The cost was unbeatable and the flexibility suited her needs. Cheryl enrolled at WGU Indiana, making a lifestyle change decision to return and finish her degree. Because of You Can Go Back, more adults like Cheryl are returning and receiving incentives to attend colleges throughout our state. And the Commission's working to engage employers in the campaign as well, connecting them with Indiana colleges to forge new partnerships which give employees flexibility and financial support to complete their degrees. How will we know if Indiana is achieving the goals outlined in reaching higher delivering value? Simply, we will track our progress with measurable data to know if we're raising attainment and closing achievement gaps. We will continue to publish college readiness, college completion, and return on investment reports. And in the very near future, Indiana will have the ability to include college graduate satisfaction for the first time. The results of the first Gallup Indiana survey are still being reviewed and compiled, but we have a few early findings to share with you today about participating public schools. Based on about 8,000 alumni responses, 83% agree or strongly agree that higher education was worth the cost. They report higher levels of well-being and work fulfillment compared to college graduates nationally. The results also underscore the need for these improvements to be made in all three sections of our strategic plan. For example, less than half of graduates who responded indicated that they received support outside of the classroom to help complete their degrees. Just one in three graduates strongly agree they were well prepared for life after college, a key goal of competency. Too few, about one third, say they had help from their university in finding an internship or job during college. And only 13% got help from their university finding a job after graduation. The commission will release full statewide results for the first Gallup Indiana survey early this summer. These results are just one piece of a more comprehensive measure we will unveil in partnership with USA funds later this year. Building on our readiness, completion, and return on investment data, the Commission is developing a first-in-the-nation measure of college value called the Indiana College Value Index. The new measure for Indiana's colleges and universities will leverage the best quantitative and qualitative data available. The index will help Hoosiers answer the most fundamental questions about higher education. Will I graduate? Will I learn what I need to know? And will I find meaningful employment? Ensuring that every student can answer those questions with a resounding yes is the goal of reaching higher delivering value. In the last decade, We've seen Hoosiers with education beyond high school improve their economic standing, while those with less education have experienced stagnant earnings and reduced job security. Now, more than ever, the question is not whether Hoosiers need higher education, but rather how can Indiana deliver greater value for students and the state? It means helping more students graduate, making sure students learn what they need to know and can enter a fulfilling career. Everyone has a role to play in helping Indiana achieve these goals. State policymakers must continue to support performance-based college funding and student financial aid policies that encourage completion. Colleges must continue to improve and increase practices that keep students on track to graduate. They must provide high quality programs that equip students with the knowledge they need to succeed and find ways to give all students career experiences. More employers must be involved, collaborating with K-12 and colleges to provide more information, more internships, 
and to help Indiana build a strong workforce and economy. And of course, students themselves play a critical role in maximizing the value of their education. Even the most student-centered, responsive higher education system requires individuals with sound judgment, a strong work ethic, and a genuine interest in learning. As a state, it's our job to set high expectations, but students must take full advantage of those opportunities to meet those expectations. The curiosity to seek out new knowledge, the ability to apply what you learn, the resiliency to adapt to changing circumstances, these are the skills that, sh that college graduates need, that employers expect, and a 21st century world demands. Simply stated, but far more difficult to achieve. It will be challenging for certain, but these challenges are nothing compared to the consequences if we fail to our state or to our families. Indiana's higher education system can lead the nation in delivering exceptional value. We have the right plan. We have the right partners. We have the shared purpose of building a stronger Indiana through higher education. Let's get to work. Thank you very much, Commissioner Lovers, for your thought-provoking and exciting presentation. Thank you very much. We are ready to roll up our sleeves and get to work. Uh, before we go to work, we're going to go and eat. Uh, and so as we said, er I heard an amen. <laughs> Again, very special thanks to the Indiana House of Representatives. Thank you, Ball State, for graciously hosting us, and everyone, thank you for attending.